Okay guys, here we are. We're going to head to our destination. We're going to do the uh, train today. We are at 63rd and Cottage. This was the entertainment area of Woodlawn. There's a national bank at the top. That was the location of the wake of Clarence Darrow's uh, film was held there. There was a lot of entertainment on 63rd. This place right here used to be the Tivoli Theater. Of course it was torn down for, uh, and now what stands here is a family dollar. The Grand Ballroom. It's been restored. And heading to the intersection of 64th and Cottage now. Get your books and cultural uh, emporium open for business. But this is the neighborhood of Woodline. If you look at photos, this used to be a gas station here and across the street, it's Pershing Hotel. Woodlawn was a middle-class white neighborhood until 1948 when the housing restriction laws were lifted. And during World War II, it was, cons it was commandeered by the U.S. for temp housing for soldiers, just as the Sutherland uh, Hotel was. Check my previous vlog. Woodlawn had a conflict and housing, not enough housing. So some uh, residents of Woodlawn actually used the hotel for uh, their housing needs. So when the World War II came and the soldiers needed a place to come in and, 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 and be healed before returning back to war, this is one of the places they went. But many of the civic leaders did not want that. And uh, they were against it. So the soldiers were only in the Pershing Hotel for one month. The hotel became black owned in 1943. The building was demolished in, in the 80s. There's a picture online. You will see Sun Ra actually standing in front of Bud, Bud Land. Budland was on the first floor and it was on the left of the building in Cottage. So if you see it's more so over here it was Budland. And there's a photo of Sun Ra standing outside in front of the club. Roy Haynes stayed at the club and he, he talks about staying at the hotel. He's getting ready to leave for a California gig. His base got stolen. The Lugwood drum facility was on the north side. He went to get a replacement. Lester Young was here at this as well. Max Roach and Miles were present. They went to see them, uh, send them off. And you know, back in those days, the drums, the bass drums were, were big, Why? Roy Haynes came back with a smaller uh, bass drum and Lester Young was joking. Princess Wee Wee drum. 
Coincidentally, that same day, Charlie had just got fired from a club. Studs Turkle, the uh, radio announcer, actually attended a performance here with Billie Holiday was singing in, at Budland. As he describes it, about 25 people were in the club that night. And it was like a year or two before her passing. But she was singing um, uh, one of her uh, tunes, Willow Weep for Me. Now, initially, um, they had called the club Birdland. And of course, with the conflict in uh, New York, there being a, bud, a bird land already, they renamed the club to Bud Land. Now, this hotel was actually uh, uh, was a venue for many performers. Dinah Washington performed here. There's also photos you can see online with the uh, adver advertisement of Dinah Washington playing here. Hitler, Ruth Brown, B.B. King, Arthur Prysock, and uh, Arnett Cobb very early on. And Arnett Cobb was playing, I think it was the, the Birdland at the time, right before they switched to uh, Birdland. Also as well, Charlie Parker it seemed to frequent this place. Charlie Parker recorded here, and he had a, a two-week uh, stint here in 1949. And uh, he recorded here in 1950. Now, on that uh, first recording from 1949, he had... Uh, it was the spring of 1949 it was recorded. And he would have had Kenny Dorham on trumpet, Al Haig on piano, Tommy Potter on bass, and Max Roach on drums. And then October 23rd, 1950, he recorded with the Freeman Brothers. Von Freeman, Russ Freeman, George Freeman. And that would have been this album here, Charlie Parker at the Pershing Ballroom. Ahmad Jamal also recorded at the Pershing. Album title, but not for me, in 1958 on the Argo label, which is a subsidiary of Chess Records. Poinciano was also recorded here. The lot of the Pershing Hotel. We are standing inside what used to be Budland in Chicago. Budland, all the people that would have played in here. Amazing. Well, that was our tour to the Pershing Hotel. Many times I passed that lot, 64th and Cottage, and had no idea what was there. Now I know. Something very historical. Can you imagine sitting there, 64th and Cottage, and hearing Billy in the 50s? What an experience that must have been. Man, if you have any information or uh, on the Pershing uh, Hotel, Budland, the ballroom, or 
uh, that you, information that you'd like to share or that you've heard, please share it in the comment section. I'm going to post links to the photos that I've been able to find online. It's very interesting photos. You can see how the building, how it transitioned uh, from its earlier days when it was mainly a white neighborhood and then it's sort of changing over a black neighborhood for 40s and 50s and, uh, and into the 60s. I'm gonna post the photo, some photos. An interesting one is seeing Diz and Berg playing in the ballroom and Ahmad Jamal's recording there, spectacular. Poinciana was recorded there. His album made money for uh, chess, uh, the jazz division. But like I was saying, uh, Urban Decay took over in the 60s. If you look at some photos that I'll post from the 60s, um, man, you can see the building taking a turn. And uh, the building was also, uh, people would call it, it was a blight. Um, it was an eyesore. So it was ultimately torn down. But, uh, well, we saw what was there or what existed uh, there now, a vacant lot. So I don't know what will be there. If anything else will be there, I don't know. But there are historical moments that took place there musically. And let's not forget that. Till next time, thanks for watching.